So I've just hit a big milestone on my channel having 100 subscribers and I would like to thank every one of you for subscribing to my channel and as my thank you message I will show you how to create a simple project using the Arduino and the OLED screen just showing some kind of message and animating those kind of like fireworks animations. So let's get started. Now one thing that might not be obvious is this this OLED screen is actually a transparent screen so if I just put it like here you can see that you can see through the screen and it's a pretty cool screen and I hope to use this screen for more projects in the future. I actually still have the protective film on it so let me just try to remove it. There's the front one and there is one for the back. Okay, so now you see you can see the screen in the full glory. Again, it's a very nice looking transparent OLED screen. Now the OLED screen uses SSD 1306 driver chip, which is hidden behind this sticker down there. And the chip supports both the SPI and I Square C connection. And when I've ordered this display, it came with the board like this. And you can tell by the number of connectors, this is predefined to be used with the I Square C connection, which is also listed in here. But what I've done instead is I've used a different board from a different display using the same chip that is predefined before the SPI connection because the SPI connection is faster. That said, you can use the both I Square C or the SPI connection based on your needs. And I will show you in the code how you can set up a both. Here I have it preset for the SPI connection. So the CS goes to pin 8, the DC goes to pin 9. The reset goes to pin 10, the SDA goes to pin 11, and the SCL goes to pin 13. And of course, ground goes to ground and VCC goes to uh, 5 volt in here. So I'm using Arduino Uno, which is the, you know, the basic Arduino board. You can use pretty much any kind of Arduino board. I have this nice little shield on it, which allows me to use this little breadboard and I have access to all the Arduino pins for so for a simple project like this. I don't need any additional breadboard and everything is nice and tight on one place. You also have access to the reset button, which is in here because touching the, the original reset, which is hidden in between might be hard sometimes. So you have the res additional reset in here. Before we start writing any code, we might need some reference picture of what we are trying to achieve. And you can see this is the picture that I've used for my project. We will be using online free tool called Photopia, which is very similar to Photoshop. So let's get started. I'll create a new document, so file new. And I will size it the same way as the display, which is 128 by 64 pixels. DPI set to 20, uh, 72 should be fine. The background black is probably, probably better, so I'll create a new document like this. You can see it's very small, so I will zoom in as much as I can like this. And maybe instead of using black for the fill, I will fill it with very dark gray, and you will see in a minute why I'm doing this. So I will hit OK, create a new layer inside the layers pane, and just select Edit, Fill with the foreground color. OK, and now we have a gray background. So I don't care that much about the actual text because the text will be drawn with the UAGG library using some default font, but I can still, you know, type in something if I want to. What I'm more interested about is the animation of the exploding fireworks. And I just said that I will use 8 by 8 tiles for the animation frames. And you can see in my previous file, I've started with like six different frames. It kind of felt very fast and, you know, not, not that nice. So I ended up using like 10 different frames, but it's really up to you how many frames you will use and what will be the size of the individual frames. The only requirement is the width should be divisible by eight. So that's why I'm using eight by eight tiles. So what I will do is I will create a new rectangular selection and I will do it in the size of eight by eight pixels like so. And now I will fill this with black color. So make sure that the foreground is set to black. Select edit fill and fill it with foreground color. And of course I've created a new layer. That's always a nice approach. Then I will zoom in even more and start creating those individual frames. For that, I will use a pencil tool, which is hidden behind the brush tool. If you hold the you know, mouse for a long time over the brush tool, you will have the access to pencil tool. And I will set the pencil size to be only one pixels and the foreground color to be white. So I want to draw white pixels. I will try to find the center of the piece, which, you know, of course, this is 8 by 8, so there is no center. So I'll try to find the center of the by like 7 by 7 piece, which is might be like this. I, I think it might be like this. Let me just see. Yeah, it, it was probably the right one. So I will undo all my steps to make sure this is center. And this will be my first frame. 
The next step, I will copy this and move it by 10 pixels. And I will do this by holding Alt and Shift key on my keyboard and pressing the right arrow. And that will create me a new layer by copying this layer and moving it 10 pixels to the right side. So this is the next frame and I can continue. Actually, before I continue, I will just click this little icon. So the foreground will be black, background will be white and then switch this. So I have the white and black and I can switch between those colors using the X key on my keyboard. So if I had pressed the X key, now I have, I'm drawing with black. If I press the X key, now I'm drawing with white. So I can easily draw another frame, maybe like so. So it's like exploding. Then select the selection tool or the move tool, sorry, the move tool, press the Alt and Shift and move it, you know, 10 pixels to the right side. This is the next frame. Again, select the pencil tool and draw it maybe like this. And I don't know, maybe delete this one. I'm not quite sure how it will look like. Maybe not yet, maybe just keep it there. Next frame and continue. And I might speed up this a little bit, but okay, this might be fine. And you can see I'm, I'm using different approaches. You know, those are different looking explosions, but as soon as you are trying to incorporate the movement into individual pixels, I think that we should be fine. So again, a brush tool, or sorry, the pencil tool, like so. Sorry, delete those. And maybe start new section of the animation, which will go sideways and top and bottom. Okay, so this will explode to sides and this should be fading like so. The unfortunate way with the Photopia is you cannot actually play the animation, but I don't think that's really needed in this case. Okay, so let me just create a few more frames and this might be the last one. So I will release those parts like so and we have some kind of animations. You can see we are using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different frames. So let's see how this will look like. So we have individual frames. As a first step, I will just rename all the animation layers with some meaningful names. As a next step, we want to export those as individual PNG files. And we can do it in two different ways. I can just select the layer and click the PNG button that will download the PNG file, but you can have to do this for every single layer, which I guess is fine for just nine layers. The other way is you select the file export layers, make sure that this is unchecked so it will export all the layers. We want to trim the transparent parts, that's for sure. And I will not use pellets because it might cause some problems. I will click export layers and it will export me the zip file with all the layers in there. So you can see I can just uh, move those nine or you know, nine different PNG files in the place where I want those to be. As a next step, we want to convert those PNG files into C structures. And for that, we will use a web page called image to CPP. I will put down a link in the description. So I'll select choose files and choose our nine exported PNG files. It should be pre-populated with the correct sizes and we can keep all the properties by default because we've already created those images in the correct size with the correct color format. So I will just click the generate code and it will generate me this code, which we will use in a minute because we need to start with something simpler first. We will start in the walkway or walkway. I don't know how to say it. It's the online Arduino emulator page, which is pretty great. And there is already an example of the OLED display being connected to the Arduino board and a simple program running just a progress bar. So this is a great first step. So what we will do is we will just comment out the drawing function because we don't want to draw the progress bar and maybe rename the progress to like actual frame. Maybe let's rename it to frame. And we know that we have like eight, sorry, nine frames. So when it's lower than eight, we'll just increase the frame. Otherwise we'll set it back to zero. We just need our images. So in the image to CPP, I will copy this code into the online emulator. Let's just make sure that it's copied and then we'll paste it maybe here, like so. And then we need to draw some image. So as a first step, let's just draw one image and we will use a function, which is draw bitmap P, which needs the X position, Y position and the size. And it's not the width, it's the count. So it's number of bytes in the horizontal direction, which is means that we need to divide the width by eight and the height and the actual bitmap. So we can maybe copy this sample code just to make it easier jump back and i will just say draw bitmap on position zero and zero 
it, this is true, so it has uh, 8 pixels divided by 8 and the height is 8 as well but we want to sh you know, draw any of those, any of our bitmaps, so maybe frame number 6 we need to see some pixels and then I will just click this, restart the simulation and see how it looks like on the display and we have it there, so this is our frame being displayed but it's not animating in any way, so let's just fix it so instead of drawing this image we will reference the image using this array that was already created for, for us in the image to CPP. So I'll just copy this array. And for the actual index in the array, we will use this frame. So frame value goes from 0 to 8 because yeah, it, it starts from 0, not from 1. So 0 from 8. It will reference images from 1 to 9. So let's restart the simulation and see how it looks like. And we see something maybe a little bit too fast. So what I might do is I might just introduce, sorry, not here, but I might just introduce a little bit of delay, maybe like 10 milliseconds or so, just so we can see the animation clearly. Obviously, this will only be for the simulator. We will remove it for the actual Arduino code. And this is it. So this is how it looks like. I'm pretty happy with the result. If you are not, you can always go back to Photopia and you know, redraw those sprites with a different animation, export those using image to CPP until you are happy. But I'm pretty happy with the result, so we'll continue with having multiple sprites at once. Actually, you know what? Let's try this on the Arduino because seeing this in the browser is one thing, but seeing it running on the Arduino is a totally different thing. So what I will do is I will copy the code, start my Arduino IDE and just paste it in there. And as I've mentioned previously, this is using S, you know, I2C connection. So if you have an I2C display, this is perfectly fine for you. I just need a different initialization for the SPI display. So I'll just copy this one, which uses the pins that I've already mentioned previously. And then I will just, uh, you know, comment out the delay. I don't need any kind of delay and try to upload it on the board. And hopefully everything will be fine. Let's see. And I was completely wrong with the delay. So I had to put it back. Otherwise it was very, very fast and you know, unusable. In this case but don't worry when we will have multiple of those fireworks animating at the same time you will not have this uh, problem so it looks nice let's move on so we need multiple sprites animating at the same time and it will be nice to somehow set the number of sprites so let's create a new constant that will be type of integer and let's call this sprite count for example sprite count and set it to maybe 10 for now we might increase this in the future and then we need some kind of arrays. We need an array to hold the X and Y position and also the current image. So we will create a new array, which will be sprite X. And of course, that will be the size of the sprite count. So we'll just copy it in here. Then we will need the same thing, but for the Y position, so sprite Y. And the last thing we need will be sprite image, like so. So we have three different arrays that hold the X, Y and image. And we need to initialize those in the setup so inside the setup, we want to initialize it. So we'll say that for loop, uh, let's just set the right one. So integer e equals zero, while the e is smaller than the sprite count, only this one, like so. I will just increase the y, like so, and I will set the older you no know, arrays to some values like so. So the sprite x, y, and image with the current index. So the x might be some, let's say, random value that will go between 0 and let's say 128 minus 8, so it doesn't go outside of the screen. We will do the same for the y position, but it will only go up to 64 minus 8, just so because the display resolution is 128 by 64 and for the image initially i was using a random function but i found out that it looks a little bit better when you know it's like a, there is like a sequence of of images changing so instead of using random function i will say let's just say y modulo uh, number of images which in our case is nine right is it nine yes I see that I'm using the wrong character in the for function. It should be a semicolon like so. And since we have this uh, you know, setup, we are still not drawing anything. So we want to use the very same function to draw our sprite. So I will just copy this for loop for drawing the bitmap. So I will just say draw my bitmap in here. And we will set the position x 
to sprite x and position y to sprite y and the image of course will be sprite image inside the you know inside the array like so so this should be fine let's see how it goes and as expected we have 10 different images being drawn on display they are not moving or updating because we are not updating those in the loop but that's what we will do right now so inside the loop but outside the drawing, drawing function let me just get rid of this one so outside the drawing function which is in here we will just update our sprites so I'll again copy the for loop maybe i will copy this one from the setup that will be a better place to a better piece of code to use and we don't need the frame anymore so I'll just delete the frame and instead i will just paste this code for updating our sprites so we'll try to go for all the sprites and see what you know increase maybe the sprite image that's a good way to do it so the sprite image we'll just increase it and then we'll see if the sprite image is bigger than some value and the same value is of course bigger than eight we will set the new x and y position and we'll set the new image but this time the image will be zero we want to go back to the beginning and of course set the closing bracket for the if statement and hopefully now if i run it we will see the animations playing and moving into different place once those are reaching the you know yeah there is some kind of problem let's see so delay okay i believe i'm missing the opening bracket in here let's let's try this one more time and indeed we have the animation playing nice what's even better is of course seeing this running on the actual arduino hardware So there is not much else missing except for the text and if you want to see which fonts you can use for the uag library you can open this website i will put the link down in the description and i believe i was using 7 by 14 for the first line and 6 by 13 for the second line you just want to keep the number of fonts to minimum because they will take quite a lot of memory so let's just open our code and we already have the font setting in the setup function so i just copy this line and maybe comment this out because we are we are not using this font at all and then inside the drawing function i will set the font to be 7 by 14 and draw some string and for this we need a function called draw draw string and you can look up the documentation to find out that we need x and y position and the actual string so we'll set the x to 0 for now y maybe 25 and the text is of course thank you then we'll copy paste it one more time set the font to be 6 by 13 and the reason for doing so is because i already know that the line or the string 400 sub subscribers will just not fit the display width with the 7 by 14 and let's just set the y to maybe 45 in this case and let's restart the simulation to see how it looks like okay that looks fine to me it just i would like those uh, labels to be center aligned so let's just fix this to make the text center aligned uh, we need to know the width of the text which we can get using the function get string width so let's just say uag dot get string width and use the same string so that will be thank you in this case and that will give us you know the string width which of course we need to divide by two because we only need half of it and we need to just subtract it from 128 divided by 2 as well so this should be the code to draw the thank you center aligned and we will just copy the same code for the second line for the exposition but of course now we will use the 400 subscribers text like so and hopefully it will work let's just restart the simulation and it works which is of course great and so here it is running on the arduino board again using this nice transparent oled display so i've decided to do one more tweak and that is to show the names of the individual subscribers at least the ones that uh, allow showing their names and that's pretty much it thank you for watching if you have any questions or maybe some suggestions for next video please let me down in the comment section and if you want to know more about this setup i would suggest you watch my other video which is the turbo gauge which also uses arduino and the oled display but goes much more in depth Thank you for watching and hopefully see you next time. Bye.